you know, people come to church because they want to experience God in their life, and I want to thank God that he's here with us today. I also want to thank God that you're here with us today, and I believe that it's not a coincidence. Uh, God has a purpose and a plan for your life, and I want to say thanks for being here, and I'm believing that God is at work in your life today. I want to let you know about something exciting that's happening next weekend. Um, we've got Trafford Fisher coming. Who has heard Traff preach before? He's a um, gifted speaker, and um, he's our director for marriage and family ministries for their, um, our division. And so it's a real privilege to have him come. He's going to be speaking in the well. And then after church at 2 o'clock, he's going to run a marriage seminar called T- Making Good Marriages Great. And so wherever you're at in your journey, in your relationship, this is going to be relevant for you. And so if you're married, come along, and um, that's at 2 o'clock next Saturday afternoon right here. We'd love for you to take advantage of that. We've been um, looking at Matthew chapter 5, and three weeks ago, Pastor Lisette um, spoke on the topic of you are the salt of the earth, and last week I opened up God's Word and talked about how you are the light of the world, and I'm going to continue on that theme this week. Would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray. Father in heaven, please pour out your Holy Spirit again, even more, and speak to us, each one, in the way that we need to hear from you most. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do the clicking for me, Lucas. So last week we looked at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, and I want to read it to you. It says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Imagine a city in the dark and it's lit up at night. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it up on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's what we're talking about today. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, let your light shine. Awesome. Just a little reminder of where we went last week. Lucas, can you give us the next slide? We talked about how the Bible calls us a light, and that Jesus also says of himself, I'm the light of the world. And we are to be like a lighthouse to others, shining our light so that they will be protected from difficulties and um, shown the best things um, when they need it most in a dark mo- moment. Being sh- have Lighthousing for someone else is a, a way of showing your love for them in simple and practical ways, in a way that also brings glory to God in heaven. But in the same way that we can shine a light for others, we need to allow someone to shine a light for us. And we need Jesus to shine his light for us. We need our tanks to be filled. For some of us, that's a lesson that's hard to learn. We're happy to help someone else, but we need to receive help from others and help from God. And um, go on to the next slide. Thanks, Lucas. We talked at the end there also about, um, these are pictures of cities from um, from space. And can you remember which city this was, the brightest city on earth? Las Vegas, that's right. We finished with the thought, what sort of light is within you? And even though the analogy doesn't really work for me, it's there in the Bible, and the Bible says that the light in some of us is darkness and the light in others is light. And so um, it's kind of weird that the brightest city on earth is Las Vegas, famous nicknamed Sin City. And, And the thing that's some of us, perhaps, the challenge that God's working on our hearts right now is there's some stuff in our life that he's wanting to deal with so our light can shine brighter. Think of that lighthouse swapping their, um, their coal lantern for a gas lantern and electricity, amplifying the brightness of your light. And God calls us sometimes to pull out the stops and let our full blast light shine into someone's life. There are, there are times in our life where we have to step up for someone else and really go way out of our way to be a blessing and God will guide you in those moments. This week I want to continue on with the theme and um, I want to ask the question, sometimes we think, how can I be the light of the world when I feel like I'm just one person? Or my church is too small, maybe we can be the light here to our campus, but can we really change the city of Newcastle? Can we really talk about changing the world? I want you to reflect back to when Jesus preached this message on the on the top of the mountain there to all the regular folks who came out to hear him, they would have been thinking the same thought. How can I make a difference? Is my light really going to make that much of a difference? And I want to say to you today that God wouldn't have put it in the Bible if it didn't make sense. He believes that your light 
can make a difference, and so do I. And I want to encourage you to not be down on your own light because it's just your light. And I believe that one little light can make a difference. If you've ever been stuck in the dark, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, Lucas, can you put up the next slide for us? Keep going. Keep going. There we go. Um, who knows who these guys are up on the screen? They're the cave kids, says Ben. The wild boars soccer team. And um, they just did their first interview on the Ellen Show. If you have to do your first interview somewhere, it might as well be on Ellen, right? Just go straight to the top. And so what a, what a story it was that had us all tuning in like every morning. Where are they up to? And I just want... I remember um, Bogdan taking me caving when I was a teenager and freaking out in the caves when the lights, you know, would say, let's all turn out the light and just see how dark it is just for a moment. Total pitch black darkness. But I also loved caving. It's super exciting. And I would never get into a situation like these guys. But um, <laughs> anyway, I, the, the, thanks, Bogdan, for teaching me well. And I'm surprised I didn't ring you up, actually, Bogdan, and ask for your help with this mission. But I just want to think for a moment, I want you to imagine with me, you've been in there for how long before they first saw the first person come through the water to rescue them? Sitting in the dark, when one light showed up, how happy would you have been? When you've been in the dark for a long time, you don't need like a full-on city. You're just, when one light shows up and you've been in the dark for a long time, it makes all the difference in the world. Never be down on the brightness of your one light. If God's going to set things up, if you'll let him do it. I want to challenge you today to pray this prayer. Dear God, please use me to be a light in the dark for someone who needs it, and then just see what happens. And if you pray that prayer every day, I'm telling you, God's going to set up special moments for you to be a blessing to someone else. And for them, it might sound overly dramatic, but I've... If you've been in hard times in life, you'll know what it's like. You have times in life where it does feel like you've been in a pitch black cave in the dark for ages and someone shows up with a torch and a little bit of hope comes back into your life. For these boys, it wasn't fixed straight away, but it was the beginning of it being fixed and God's going to use you. Don't be down on your own light. One person can make a huge difference. Just last week in the record, I read about this woman Robin Cunningham. Did you read this article? This is in our, our Adventist record. And I'm going to read some of it to you. An Adventist church elder, an older lady, has won city, uh, a City of Ballarat Senior of the Year Award for 2018. This has just happened. There she is. For more than 18 years, Robin Cunningham has volunteered with the Office of Public as a public advocate regarding um, community health. And so she and her team visits mental health facilities and they're a voice for patients and residents ensuring their rights have been upheld. Because many of you would know that sometimes um, folks in old people's homes are not spoken of, uh, no one's advocating for them. And um, she was ensuring they're treated with dignity and respect. And as a tireless advocate, it says she and her team undertook 98 visits to mental health facilities in the last financial year. What an awesome thing, that she's not only changing the world, but it's being recognised. And that's what happens. One person steps out, and then it starts, a, it starts a ripple effect. God wants you to be a ripple starter. And it says here, as an elder and board member and volunteer of the Ballarat Seventh Adventist Church, Ms. Cunningham has been involved with many of its programs, including the weekly food pantry, music for movement program for local mums with young children. You know, what excites me is you could swap this name for lots of people here at Walls End Church, and I think it wouldn't be too different. And I'm proud to be part of a community that loves to serve. And um, it says here, Mrs. Cunningham and her late husband also raised more than 40 foster children. And all these children, now adults, remain in touch with her today. Isn't that awesome? You know how exciting to hear the McLaren families opening their doors to someone. And they're not the only people in our church family who've made this courageous step of changing a life in the last little while. Is it easy, guys? Not necessarily easy. Is there heartbreak involved? 
Sometimes there's heartbreak involved. But God is calling us to sometimes put ourselves on the line uh, to be a light for someone else. And I just want to honour and thank the people who are doing that. That's one person, one family, making a difference, changing lives. You know, another guy up on the screen, um, let's have a look at the next one, Lucas. This guy's name is Don Ritchie. And does anybody know the story of Don Ritchie? Don Ritchie is a guy who retired next to the Gap in Sydney, Australia. Do you know where the Gap is? It's a beautiful spot there, but some people would choose that as the spot to take their own life. And he lived right across the road from where this would happen. And so in his retirement, he took to just watching out for someone. And if someone looked a bit sus, he would walk up to them and he would say, hey, how's it going? And um, what's, what's on your mind? and just start talking with them. And then um, he would have a chat with them, and he'd say, why don't you come back to my place and we can talk about it, have a hot drink together or a, or a drink together and, and just share with me what's been going on. And um, it's, it's recorded here that he's um, saved, would you believe it? Um, it's officially recognised that 160 people have been saved from taking that jump of suicide. How come? because he took some time, one person being there, having their eyes open. And I want to encourage you, if you will open your eyes, God will give you someone to be a light to. But he was there, he had to have his eyes open. And that's the conservative figure. Others estimate that it's four or 500 people that he's actually helped. Unbelievable. And what did it take? Having his eyes open, having some time, and being willing to just chat with someone life-saving. Do you think that your chats could make a difference in someone's life? I'm sure they can. And we, we're busy, I know, I'm busy. But why not just say, God, is there someone that you need me to connect with today? Help me to open my eyes, bring someone into my life so I can be a light for them. Could you invite someone home for a meal? Could you say, come around to my place and tell me about what's on your mind? If you're in high school, can you look out for your friends at school and look around and say, is everybody, you know, with those eyes of wide open, is, are my mates doing okay? So-and-so's gone quiet lately. Are they okay? And going and asking them. Maybe it's not the end of the world, but maybe they still need some help. Could you help them with their assignments? Could you help them socially to be less awkward and just connect better with some friends? doesn't matter where you are, God can help you use what you've got in your hand to be a blessing to someone else. I can think of people in our own church family, just in the last few weeks, they've helped each other out, putting furniture together because they needed those skills, or giving someone a place to stay when they needed a place to stay, or helping someone out with their car because that's what they were good at and that's what they could do. And it's happening all over the place, a text message, a phone call, but I believe that, like I said last week, I don't believe that this is a new idea for Walls End Church. My hope is as we open God's word, this is simply throwing fuel on the fire and that so that the light that we are on a hill here can just be even brighter, bringing more help, more blessing, more salvation to those around us. The next thought I want to think, um, we've been focusing on the thought that one or two lights can make a big difference. Um, here's another thought. Sometimes we think, I'm not the leader. How much difference can I make? And I want to make a suggestion to you that in Australia, you might be able to make more difference than the leader can make because we don't like leaders. <laughs> that's, our, that's our special flavour as a country. And I was talking to, um, I think, I don't know his last name probably, Jimmy Watanabe. He's uh, got family members in our church here. And um, he's a chaplain, and we were at this chaplain's retreat last week. He's Japanese, and Seventh Adventist from Japan, and he's out here working as a pastor and a chaplain in one of our schools. He's now up at Kempsey. And Jimmy reflected with me. He's lived in America for a few years, lived in Japan for a few years. Now he's ministering in Australia. And he said, Australians hate the three Ps. And I said, what are the three Ps? Can you guess what they are? Politicians, police and priests. I'm going to say priests instead of pastors. No, it's the same thing. 
And, that's, and he said, it comes from our roots as convicts. We hated the politicians, we hated the priests, we hated the police, and um, it, we haven't shaken it off easily. But you know what we do like? We like mates, and that's our way of life. And he said, the good news is Jesus is a great mate. And when Jesus was here on earth, he didn't so much get along with the politicians or the priests or the police. He got along with the regular people, and he was a great mate. And Jesus would hang out with people where mates would hang out, and they called him a drunkard and a glutton because he was hanging out where people hung out. And that's what Jesus is all about. And I think if Jesus came, I'm impressed with what Jimmy's insight is, and I think that if Jesus came to Australia here, he would get accepted just fine. And um, I think that you might be sitting there thinking, well, I'm not, I'm not the church pastor. How am I supposed to share God's love with someone else? I think that don't let that thought settle in because people are not looking for a church pastor. They're looking for a mate. And it's not news. Most people who've come to church ever have come because they've been brought by a friend. One of their friends has brought them along. That's most people, like 80 to 90% of people who are in church are there because a friend said, why don't you come along? And so I want to encourage you, don't underestimate what being a friend, what being a mate can do in someone's life. Not only can you help them, but you can connect them with the one that's going to minister to the deepest longings of their soul, and that's God. I want to talk to you for a moment about how while we can make a difference as individuals, when we unite together under Christ, our light shines even brighter. And if one can make that much difference, how much difference could it make when we work together? And I want to... um, Who here has been down to Vivid in Sydney? Just raise your hand if you've enjoyed that. I haven't been yet. I'm, I'm envious of those who have been there. But I want to reflect for a moment on... The, the journey of Vivid. Who, who when, it, when it first began back in 2009? Who's been a few times over the years? So it started out, um, just reading off online, it, said, it says here, Vivid began in 2009, and um, in, in, by 2012, it attracted more than half a million visitors to this outdoor exhibition of lights and sound there in the, surrounding the Opera House Sydney Harbour. And um, in 2013, the next year, it went up to 800,000 visitors. And then by 2015, 1.7 million visitors. And then in 2016, 2.3 million. 2017, 2.33 million visitors to Vivid. Isn't that amazing? Over just four, five, six, seven years, um, the growth like that. And I just think about this is like the spread of the light of the world in God's church. You know, when it started with 120 believers, Jesus died on the cross and then rose again, and he had a gang of about 120 people, and then it grew to 3,000, and then the years of the last 2,000 years rolled by, and now, in a, in, a, in a world of 7 billion people, 2 billion of them would say, yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, we might debate about, you know, how sincere some people are. I've got to say, whichever way you cover it up, 2, two billion people on the planet, that's pretty significant. That's a, that's a massive transformation. And I, I want to read to you from this same passage, but from the message, which is a beautiful um, version of the scripture. And so if you've got it on your phones, you can read it along with me. Um, Matthew chapter 5 from the message version. I'm going to read the whole thing from this, about the salt and the light. And um, you can listen with me. Um, It says, let me tell you why you're here. Jesus is talking to the crowds. You're here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours in this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colours in the world. Isn't that awesome? God is not to be kept a secret. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you here on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep, how do we shine? He tells us. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. I want you to just have a look at this clip 
um, from Vivid. And if you could just put that on for us, Lucas. And I want to read this again to you. As you look at this and think about what kind of God colors God's wanting you to be. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in this world. God is not to be kept a secret. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, do you think I'm going to hide you under a bucket? No, I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on a hilltop on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to be open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. God's got great plans for our church. And I just look how beautiful this is, and I just think to myself, what's my part in that? And as Vivid grew, part of the reason it grew is because they kept adding more and more developments to it. Another section, another building would get lit up. And I just think about how each one of us, we're to put the God colours into this world. And I wonder what the different colours that God's calling you to add are. Think about how we've got our Caves Beach church plant starting off soon. And I can see that that's like another whole demonstration of the God colours of this world. And when we add it all together, it catches people's attention, it changes people's lives. It's a great blessing. You know, last weekend we did our city serve, led by John and the team. About 19 people went out. Let's have a few pictures up on the screen. This is where Christians from all over Newcastle are working over the month of October to do different projects, all from different denominations, all chipping in, all under the banner of CityServe, showing how we're making our city a greater place. And um, you can see some different people. There's Sean there. I don't know who's in the orange. Um, is that you, John? Who's that one? Up the top there? I couldn't hear. And um, everybody got to... They, the, what they were doing was um, renovating and restoring and doing some groundwork over at the West Walls End Football Club. Is that right? And so um, they were there all morning, and it was, I thought it was going to rain them out, and they, somehow the rain held off. And so the, the 20 of them made a huge difference. People from the, uh, their own football club, six came out to help, and they put on a barbecue for them, and they've thanked them publicly, and thanked, they've thanked us, Walls End Church, um, on their website, saying thanks for making a big difference. And John told me they were able to have some interesting conversations, and um, yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. Tomorrow they're doing something similar again, and John's looking for about another 10 or 12 people to come and help. And so if you want to help tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and you want to go and help with the Holmesville Football Club, they're going to be shoveling some dirt to fill in some ditches um, before the season starts and a few other hands-on jobs like that. Or if you want to get into our community and help with Jake and 101, we've got, um, we could do with another few hands there as well. And so after church, wander up to Jake or John and say, yeah, I'd love to help. But I'm excited. Um, you know, I was, I'm proud of our church when we're doing things like this. And I, I was in line at Aldi down at Cardiff getting my Sabbath watermelon. And um, the guy goes, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, well, just, I'm just going to church. And then on Sunday, our church is um, doing some service projects in the community. And you could see, I think he'd never heard anything like it. And um, it was great to be able to say that. And I went, walked to the car thinking, how awesome that I, you know, he asked. And I was just able to tell him what we're up to. And um, making a difference as a team is a great way to do it. I'm excited to see Walls End Church and Macquarie College working hand in hand to change the city of Newcastle. And it's happening more and more, and that's a good thing. Um, Stormco has been making a difference. It's a team of people making a difference um, year in, year out. Depression recovery, another team of people working together to make a difference. Our kids club, a huge team of people in the holidays making a difference. All of our worship teams and Sabbath school teams, when we're at our light together, our hospitality teams, when we're working together to share food, share God's word. Many people here in our own church organize their own mission trips and they go with a team of people and be a blessing in another place and I think it's exciting and I just am thrilled to see it happening. You know, um, when you bring out the God colours in the world, people will want to take it with them. Can you go on to the next slide for me, Lucas? Um, when I was about 12 years old, we did our first family holiday overseas and went and visited Dad's family there in New Zealand. Dad's from Taranaki. Uh, this is um, under the mountain there and 
It's an awesome corner of New Zealand in the North Island. And Lucas, this is um, what they call Pukikura Park. And so at Christmas time, they put all kinds of lights through this beautiful park. So that's one photo across the top there. It's a bit hard to see. But they light it all up. And then you can go on boats and just paddle around. And there's all kinds of light displays all through acres and acres of parkland. And as a 12-year-old kid, I just thought I'd walked into some kind of wonderland. It was unbelievable staying up late at night walking through this incredible stuff. And there was there's this channel just like this. This might be the very spot. It was something like this. And they'd gotten, you know the multicolored gravel that you sometimes put in a goldfish tank? And they had a whole footpath of that and black lights over the top. And you were walking on this glowing gravel. And I remember Brad and I started stuffing our pockets full of it. And mum and dad saying, it's not magic rocks. It's just the lights that's making it glow like that. Now put it all back. And we were emptying our pockets out and putting all the rocks back. And I'm thinking, I'm not putting it all back. <laughs> How come? It was so amazing. And you know, this is what it's like when we're the light of the world, people want to have a piece of it and they want to take it with them. And they say, that's so great. And someone might say, don't take that with you. It's not that magic. And they'll think to themselves, I don't care what you say. I'm having a bit of it anyway. It's too good. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. And um, I believe that this is God's plan for us. He said, you're the light on the, of the world, a city on a hill. And I want to pray with you today that um, you will say yes to God so that if you want God to help you open your eyes to see that one person that you could be the light in the darkness for, we're going to pray about that. Or maybe you want God to help you realize your place in a team where you can serve together and multiply that light. Um, or you want, you want to have that special X factor that makes somebody just think, I've got to have that. And that X factor is the Holy Spirit. And if you want the Holy Spirit in your life to do something over and above the ordinary, I want to pray with you. Can you stand on your feet? Let's pray together. And uh, if you want to be a part of this prayer, just while everyone's heads about and eyes closed, you just raise your hand at the different spots in the prayer, and that's your way of saying, yes, God, I want to be a part of that. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we just want to praise you today. Thank you that you're the ultimate light of the world. And when you went to the cross, you showed what kind of a loving God that you are, that you're a God who pays the price for our sins, but you're a rescuing God. We think about those boys in the darkness and how thrilling it would have been to see a light come after days and days. And we think about how you've been that light to us and now you want us to be that light to someone else. If you want God to use you and you want God to help you open your eyes each day to see someone to be that light to, just while everyone's heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just lift your hand right now and that's your way of saying, yes, God, give me eyes to see how you want to use me each day. And I'm sure, God, thank you that you're seeing our willingness and that you're giving us that extra ability, that you're setting up moments where we can be in the right place and the right time to help someone with what we've got. And if you want God to show you your place in a team so that we can shine even brighter, just lift up your hand right now and, and that's your way of saying, yes, God, show me how I can work in your team in some special way so we can be brighter than ever. And if you, you want that X factor to be able to be a bright light that is just so appealing, we know it's you, God. If you want the Holy Spirit, God himself dwelling in you, shining out brighter than ever. Just lift your hand right now and say, yes, God, come and dwell within me. Be it that, that's something extra that people can't resist. They're just longing for that special connection with you and they want more of you. Just lift up your hand right now. Father, thank you that you said if we ask for your spirit, you will, you will give yourself to us. And we, we accept that today. Father, we put our trust in you. We ask that we would indeed but Brian, uh, shine and burn brighter than we ever have as a church, as a school and church campus together, and that you would help us. We've got some dreams, Lord, but I pray that you would expand our dreams and that you would help us to light this world up in a beautiful way like never before. And we pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.